you're gonna have to work your asses off. Now, a lot of you are here today because you think you can just show up, sign a piece of paper, and get the hookup. Well, that's not how this program works. I'm here to help you find a job and take control of your future. There are no grades. There are no tests. There is only you. And if you think that you are entitled to something, then you have come to the wrong place. We don't hold hands here. If you're here, it's because of two things. First, you either didn't graduate from high school, graduated with no usable skills, you're struggling to make a living and you lack the tools to improve it, or you have a criminal record and it's holding you back. Second, you recognize these limitations and you're willing to do what it takes to make a change. Now, for the next couple of days, I'm gonna be putting faces to names. That means if you have a question, please state your name first. What are the rules? If you have a question, please state your name first. Uh, Jesse Davis, what are the rules? There are three rules, Jesse. Rule number one, be on time. That means 10 minutes early. If you're on time, you're late. Rule number two. I want 100% effort, nothing less. Rule number three. No profanity. That includes the N word. This is your workplace, people. Be professional. But you said asses early. <laughs> <laughs> I make the rules you follow. If you don't like it, there's the exit. And you didn't say your name. It's Martin. That was a statement, not a question. <laughs> Stand up. You a thug, Martin? No. You smoke weed? Everybody knows every thug around here smokes loud, <laughs> especially here. From the looks of it, you fancy yourself a thug. Excuse me, man? I bet you're strapped. You got a gun on you right now, don't you? Man, I ain't got no gun, man. What you talking about, bro? You mean to tell me you walk in these streets of DC and you ain't carrying a weapon? Man, hold on, man, look. Why are you profiling me, huh? I'm just up here trying to get a job like everybody else in this job, man. You playing me like a bama, man. Whether you like it or not, the way that you look is the first thing an employer notices. Perception is everything. If you don't look the part, you'll never get the part. Now, a lot of you are from around here. And being from this neighborhood already sets you up with a bad rap. Add being black on top of that and the fact that there are plenty of people who would rather write you off than give you a chance in a heartbeat. There are people who are gonna to wanna to simplify you. They're gonna to wanna to reduce you down to the most basic form that they can. You need to learn how to shape that perception. You may sit down now. If you go into a job interview with a nice smile and a nice outfit, then you control your image and how that potential employer sees you. You make it harder for them to simplify you. I know it sounds petty, but human beings are in large part a petty species. Hi, um, I'm Rachel. What if you can't afford a nice outfit? That's a good question, Rachel. We have a very strong network of local businesses and sponsors. We'll take care of you. It's all a game, and we're gonna play it. We are going to fight 
injustice. And we are going to do it with a smile and a tie or a nice blouse for the ladies. But even if you don't like it, make me believe that you enjoy it because we are not going to take excuses and we are not going to blame the system. You are responsible for your outcome in life. It's more than just your resume or how well you can answer the top 10 most common interview questions. It's confidence. We have a 90% placement record. If you complete this program, I will find you a job. That's my commitment to you. It's there if you want to take it or leave it. All I ask is that you put in a little bit of effort. I don't want to see anybody wash out, but we're all adults. And that means it's up to you to decide that you want to change your life. I will give you 110% because I know that you'll do the same for me. Now, you're going to get a 30 minute lunch break. I want you back here by 12 noon. That means 11.50 a.m. Be on time. Terrence, right? <laughs> all right, all right. Strong, silent type. <laughs> and she's a ditty type, man, but she fine as hell. Look at it, man. I could have booked her earlier, but you know, I messed up, man. I gotta step up my game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she ain't she... interested in you. Well, you crazy, man. You this is Martin. I could book her if I want to. What you talking about, man? Is that right? Well, she don't look like the type that like Bamas. Bamas? Man, because your face ain't changed, man. I don't know if you, if you Joan or if you for real. That's messed up, man. <laughs> That's messed up. Hey, do you think they can get us a job? I don't know, girl. They sure asking a lot of time. It's just three weeks. What am I supposed to do with my kids? Well, they got to have a daycare or something. They don't. Yeah. <sighs> well, where are you going to eat? I got my lunch right here. I'm about to put money in the meter. Oh. I ain't got no money for you anyway. I ain't got no money. I never asked you for money. Good, because ain't none for you. I got enough mouths to feed already. I was just being friendly. I don't need no friends, especially no hood rat on the hustle. I ain't no hood rat, you fat cow. Oh, shit. Hey, time to go. <sighs> now we're going to focus on workplace development. One of the biggest factors that affects your ability to secure a job in this market is if you can sell yourself. I want you to imagine, imagine that you are a salesman and that the client, the client is your potential employer. The product? You. Now, how are you going to get that potential employer to buy in to your product? Well, I hope you have an answer to that because I got a very special treat for you. Today, we are going to be hosting mock interviews. And it's going to be your job to try and persuade us, the entire Aspire DC staff, as to why we should buy into I only get one shot. Make it count. 
Any questions? Good. Gina? Each of you are assigned to a group. Each group has a designated employer. This spreadsheet will tell you the time and location of your interview. Be on time. Remember, it's about attitude. Good luck. I'm a hard worker, two years data entry experience. I got excellent verbal skills, especially when it comes to the ladies. I'm a single mom with two beautiful children. I'm good with money. I don't know, maybe being a bit of a perfectionist? My uncontrollable weakness to the power of pussy. <laughs> I don't do well under pressure. Pass. Um, uh, I'd, um... What kind of conflict? You mean like if someone takes someone else's yogurt off the bridge or something? Pass. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe owning my own business? I mean, who knows? Like, five years is a long time. I never really gave it much thought. You done? I don't know, man. What kind of question is that? Pass! We are in trouble. <laughs> Glenn, there are two police officers here waiting to speak with you. Good morning, officers. Sergeant O'Hare, it's my partner, Officer Smith. Glenn Johnson. I'd like to talk to you if we could. You have to excuse the place. It's an old building. We're in the process of making renovations. What can I help you with? We'd like to ask you a few questions about Travis Mitchell. He's a good kid. Graduated about a month ago. I know that he didn't show up for work this morning. What do you know that I don't? When was the last time you saw or spoke with Mr. Mitchell? Well, he texted me a few days ago but I haven't seen him since he graduated. Did he ask you for anything in this text? Why don't we get to the point, officers? Mr. Mitchell was known to associate with the Wild, wild Boys. Do you even know which neighborhood he grew up in? Because you're not even in the right zip code. His friends did associate with gang members, but he was never a part of it. Well, that's kind of funny because he was involved in an attempted robbery yesterday. Excuse me? We talking about the same Travis? And we believe it was gang related. We don't know that for sure. He hangs out with known gang members and he has a criminal history. Six months ago. What? Six months ago he associated with gang members, but not today. Whatever. The kid tried to rob somebody yesterday, and he got shot for his trouble. Travis was shot. We'd like you to take a look at those photographs and tell us if Mr. Mitchell ever associated with any of those people. How bad was he injured? Mr. Johnson, please. Where is he? Which hospital? DC Medical? The kid's dead. Mr. Johnson, if you could just look at the photographs, please. I've never seen anything before. Take a longer look. No need. I've never seen any of those people before. Look, we're just trying to do our jobs here. Then do your job. Stop making assumptions based off rumors and the kid's skin color.
Thank you for your time. Sam, you didn't have to come all the way down here. Well, Colin wasn't working. I'm sorry, things have been very crazy here this morning. Well, I wish I was down here with some good news. What's going on? One of our recent placements, Travis Mitchell, he was shot this morning. You know about that? It's all over the news. And they're saying it's gang related. We can't make any confirmations until we have all the facts. They're just piecing together a story based off of his past. You want to tell that to Kessler Construction? What's going on? That's why I needed to talk to you today. They called this morning to drop him out. Sam, we don't even know the full story yet. These companies don't care about facts, Glenn. No one wants to be affiliated with negative publicity. They know he was one of our recent graduates and they don't want to assume the risk. Kessler Construction is one of our biggest employment networks, Sam. We cannot afford to lose them. What do you want me to tell you? It's their choice. And Glenn, if it is gang related, it's gonna be really bad for the Aspire program. I mean, really bad. I can see what I can do with some damage control. I don't know how much good it's gonna do. You know these companies, they talk to each other. All right. Thanks, Sam. Name, Max Ewart, age, 34. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. One pair of boots, one brown belt, one pair of blue jeans, one wedding ring, one cotton shirt. With you. Are you coming? Coming where? I was just saying I could take you and Rachel downstairs to hunt for some new clothes. <laughs> nah, I'm good, Joe. Nah, y'all ain't gonna have me looking all crazy in some double-breasted Steve Harvey looking suit. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people donate. Nah, I'm good, man. Y'all go ahead. Suit yourself then. Ready, Rachel? Yeah. Where are you guys going? Downstairs to look at some clothes. Can I come? Of course you can. Okay. <laughs> hey, I was just playing. Let's go. <laughs> I thought you had too much swag for donated clothes. No, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I'm gonna check it out. Okay then. I'll take the girls first and then I'll come and get you. In the meantime, keep Terrence company. Try to work on his people skills. <laughs> we can find something nice in here. Maybe. Gina seems to think so anyway. Yep. I'm sorry about the other day. My kids always have me so stressed out. I shouldn't have taken it out on you. 
Anyway, sorry. Hey, what do you think of this dress? Very pretty. <laughs> Come on, I think I saw something over there that would look so great on you. Can I help you? Yes, are you an instructor here? Yes, I am. Then can you give us your perspective on the recent shooting at Travis Mitchell? I'd rather not. The police seem to think the victim was actually trying to rob the man who shot him. You helped find that young boy a job. Do you bear some of the blame for exposing everyday people to a former criminal? I'm not going to discuss this. It seems a large number of graduates from your program are individuals with criminal records. I was hoping you could give us some insight as to what type of person this boy was. This program, ma'am, is for young people who are willing to improve their lives through work ethic and self-development, despite the fact that there are people who are telling them that it's pointless. And some of these individuals do have criminal records? Some of them have had run-ins with the law, yes, but they're here now, ma'am. They're trying to make something up. Did their life. I don't think it's Travis necessary Mitchell for you to have a criminal record? Excuse me. We're just trying to get the whole picture here, that's all. The whole picture. Okay. Take a look around you, ma'am. Do you see this area? Do you see the people in this community? They are constantly ignored. They are constantly left to fend for themselves. Nobody helps. Only when something like this happens do people like you come down here expressing interest in something like this. And why is that? Because you want to find out what kind of petty crimes this young black man must have gotten himself into in order to get into a situation such as this. Let me explain something to you, man, because we're in a situation right now where a white man shot and killed an unarmed black man, a good man. You come down here to this school to try and find out if this guy has got some kind of a criminal record? Think about this, man. Let, let, let me explain something to you. This white man, he is probably going to walk. And when he does, it's going to be because of people like you who are focusing on the wrong things, focusing on what this black kid must have done to, to get himself killed. Sir, we're just you know trying what? to get I've, I've got a class that I need to teach. Thank you. Did you get all that? Oh, yeah. Good. Hmm. Let's go. We're in a situation right now where a white man shot and killed an unarmed black man. A good man. And let's get to some breaking news right now out of Southeast Washington. So was it any better today? What? I know you've been distracted lately. <laughs> yeah, well, today I got harassed by some crazy reporter at the job. <laughs> I guess there's worse people to get harassed by, huh? I know that's right. Ready for those mushrooms whenever you are. The shocking thing was this shooting that happened just before 4 o'clock. Uh, happened next to that school, uh, Stanton Elementary School. We believe it's now a middle school. Uh, a juvenile was struck. We're told when he was transported, he was conscious and breathing. Uh, what's sad about all of this, besides the fact that a young person was shot, was almost at the same time, people were loading up into buses, leaving classes. So a very bizarre and sad scene here as investigators looking around this area and young people getting onto school buses. Now, we also have a, a second scene here. We're going to walk around this way right next to a D.C. school. Only when something like this happens, do people like you come down here expressing interest in something like this. And why is that? Because you want to find out what kind of petty crimes this young man must have gotten himself Stop. into in order to get into Listen. We're in a situation right now where a white man shot... That's you. ...killed an unarmed black... You're on TV! Yeah. Please come down here. 
around here in this school to try and find out if this guy has got some kind of a criminal record? Think about this, man. L l let me explain something to you. This white man, he is probably going to walk. And when he does, it's going to be because of people like you who are focusing on the wrong things, focusing on what this black kid... Why'd you turn it off? Not believe that reporter go to me into going off on TV like that. Gina, she had that plan from the start. Glenn, you were good. That, Gina, that's a hot-headed, pointless rant. It's not pointless. There are people who haven't thought about it like that before, and maybe you gave someone a new perspective. <laughs> Nobody cares about what a black man is yelling about on the news. This white man, he is probably going to walk. And when he does, it's going to be because of people like you who are focusing on the wrong things, focusing on what this... Confidence. It's more important than what other people say or do. Every day we have a choice. What attitude are we going to embrace for the day? Life is 10% circumstance and 90% how you choose to react to it. So smile! Yo, Mr. Johnson. Saw you on the news last night. You was on the news? Yep, and he was pissed. Talking about that boy that got cat. All right, okay, yes, I was on the news, but we're not here to talk about me, we're here to talk about you, okay? So, today we're gonna to be having mock interviews. I can't send you out into the world to interview for jobs if I don't even know if you can talk to potential employers. So, Gina has got a paper on it, she's got the top 10 most common interview questions, we're gonna pass that out, I want you to pair up into groups and we're gonna find out if you can answer these questions. Gina and I are gonna be listening to your answers. We lost another contract. Who's it this time? Murray and Sons. Shit. We're gonna need some new blood. I've got some leads. I'm gonna make some calls after this. Where's your partner? I couldn't find one. Why not? There's no one left. <laughs> That's funny. I see a whole room full of people. Everyone else is, is paired up. You deserve a chance, Rachel. But you are not going to get that chance if you don't get out there and make it happen. There's no shame in failure. The only shame comes when you don't get back up. Now go. Find a group. Get them ditches, dude. Yeah, I hear you talking. I don't see a lot of people. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. As soon as that bear, I'm get it by the way, you know? I'm telling you. What's so funny? Nothing. There's gotta be something funny. Nah, we just climbing around, man. Why don't you practice your interview skills for me? Man, we did that already. Why don't you do it again? Martin, interview Terrence. Tell me your strengths, man. I'm passionate. Wrong answer. Try again. I'm a hard worker. 
Wrong answer. Try again. I'm good with people. Wrong answer. The fuck is this bull? See, I knew you were a hothead. You're trying to fuck with me. You need to learn not to blow up at every frustration level, Terrence. Sit down. Maybe I don't feel like sitting down no more. I ain't your punk ass bitch. Without a job, you were everyone's bitch. If you don't learn to control your anger, you'll never have a job. Now sit down. <laughs> I got a job already. Clearly you want something more. That's why you're here. Wanting something don't mean you can get it. I got a job already. And that's more than most of motherfuckers in here can say. Don't settle, Terrence. You can have more. Are you crazy? Are you all crazy? It's a bunch of bullshit, man. I don't need this shit. Get out my way, man. Why did you take me out the Max Ewert story? Last time I checked, I was still the editor-in-chief. I don't think I owe you a reason for any of my decisions. There is no story. White male shoots black team. White male gets arrested, the end. We don't know that, there's still a trail. No, I mean, let it go. I bet if you looked hard enough, there's a story in Chinatown for your name all over. No, thank you. I've got a story right here. This is a local story at best. Without a sense of injustice, nobody cares. Glenn Johnson. Yeah, the guy from Aspire. So what? He's the product of an environment that's angry and tired of racial inequality. He cares. His community cares. What's your point? We uploaded that clip two days ago on the internet. 1.5 million views. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Hashtag justice for Travis. It's trending as we speak. Some of the witnesses are claiming that self-defense, another white male acquitted for the murder of an innocent black teen. <sighs> Thomas, do you know what that will do to our community? To our nation? Give me an interview with Glenn, and I will turn this into a national story. And all this time, I thought you were just a pretty face. It's yours. Yes! Go get to work. <laughs> Love you, Thomas. And when he does, it's going to be because of people like you who are focusing on the wrong things, focusing on what this black kid must have done to, to get himself killed. What you doing and ain't proving any fucking lies. You was better raw before you started robbing shit Spending all this time when you could say yourself before you die They ain't know that, but I knew that when I started this It ain't easy to continue, but the hardest shit is that I wanna die And I don't wanna keep on recording this music The lyrics speak, but y'all ain't listen to it Nobody cares about a way with soul Nobody knows how much I've had to have to pay the full But fuck it, why am I the one they putting down? Why ain't I the one with gold? Why ain't I the one who take the fucking crown?
Are you interviewing for the job? Mm-hmm. Are you? Yeah, I actually read an ad about it in the paper, and I thought it might be a good fit. But I'm kind of nervous, though. I mean, I've never worked in an office before. This place looks really nice. Uh-huh. Do you have any pointers? Pointers? Yeah, like, you know, for the interview or maybe even just working in an office. I usually don't give advice to people who are applying for the same position as me. It's your outfit, honey. My clothes? I... I was just trying to look nice. Miss Warren? Yes, you can come in now. That's me. Good luck! Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Johnson from the Aspire program? I'm sorry to call, but I got your number from the website. It's about my son. Okay, that's all right. Who's your son? My son was Travis Mitchell. I see. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss, Mrs. Mitchell. Travis, he was, he was one of my best students. I, I had to call to thank you. Thank me? For what? on the news, Mr. Johnson, and you defended my son in front of God and everyone. You, you really don't need to. Yes, I do. When I saw you on the TV, it was the first time that I actually heard someone stand up for my little boy, and I needed you to know how much that meant. I don't know what to say, Mrs. Mitchell. Travis, he had a lot of potential. I was just saying what I knew to be true. Well, I'll be going now. Bye, Mr. Johnson. One moment. Mrs. Mitchell, I still have Travis's graduation certificate. He worked hard for that piece of paper. I thought you might like it. Oh my, I would, I would like that very much. I'll bring it over tonight. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Mitchell. Mrs. Mitchell, I'm Glenn Johnson. We spoke on the phone. He was such a good boy. I just can't believe. He was a very dedicated student. I was very proud to have him in my class. He was always a smart boy. Did Travis live here with you? Oh, yes. He was saving up to buy his own place. He didn't have a lot, but he worked hard and he always managed to put some away and he gave me some. That's all I had, Mr. Johnson. He was all I had left. Well, it's pretty obvious that he cared a lot about you. Yes. <laughs> he was a good boy. Well, I need to be going now, Mrs. Mitchell. Ah, uh, I'm really sorry for your loss. Travis will be missed. M Mr. Johnson, wait. Uh, wait right there, please. Travis had big dreams. And even when people say that they was crazy, he wanted to be a pilot, see the world. 
He never been on a plane but once. And they let him sit where the pilot sits. Gave him this. He said it was his wings. And he kept it all these years. You know, the things you said on that broadcast, Mr. Johnson, are things that I really needed to hear. My boy had a light in him. And I just needed to know that someone else saw that. He might not have been a pilot, but he could have been something great. I just want you to have this. I can't take this. Please, Mr. Johnson. Rico, is your mom home? Hey, Rico, I'm coming, honey. Glenn, what are you doing here? I used to play with these toys all the time when I was your age. This whole living room used to be a battlefield. That's your uncle, Glenn Rico. I wish I'd have known you were coming by. I could at least cleaned up a little bit. Well, I was in the area, so I just, uh... Well, it's good to see you. And don't mind Rico. It's just been a while since you've been around. It's getting big. Where'd you find all my toys? Oh, upstairs in your old room. Mom kept the door locked. She swore up and down that you were going to move back in. I can send someone over to fix that. It's okay. It gets stuck sometimes. Dante said he was going to fix it. And where is he? Work. He gets off soon. Is he doing okay? He's good. We still argue 24-7, but he does so much for me, Enrico. Tamika, I can help you with that. Glenn, I got it. Oh, shit! Big Ed! Uncle Dante! Where's your mom at? Over there. Tell me what's he doing here? He was just stopping by. You got my check, right? I'm not here about the rent, Dante. I was in the area, I just wanted to say hello. Nah, nah, just because you in the area don't mean you welcome over here. This is my house. Nah, this ain't your house. This ain't your house, Glenn. It's mom's house. All you is is a landlord. I'm gonna go. Glenn, you just got here. Bye. Dante, relax. I'm gonna send someone over to fix the faucet. Okay? I'll fix the faucet, man. I thought she was leaving. Go ahead. Bye, Rico. I'll tell you about talking to strangers. Go in the kitchen.
Leaving messages on your voicemail wasn't working. So I thought, what the hell? I might as well just stop by. That's because I was ignoring them. <laughs> you sure know how to make a lady feel welcome. You don't know how to take a hint, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk. About what? Everything I have to say, your cameras have already recorded. Let's cut the pleasantries. I'm here to make you an offer. An offer? An offer to let the world hear the voice of someone who grew up in a community that's constantly getting screwed by white privilege and racial inequality. This story has a chance to go nationwide. Imagine your voice behind it informing the world that every little boy from Southeast DC isn't a criminal. Let the nation know that we all deserve an equal opportunity. Not interested. Okay. If you change your mind, then give me a call. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but your interview is all over the internet. People respect your opinion. They admire you for speaking the truth. It'd be a shame if you passed up an opportunity to speak for your community, especially when they sure as hell seem like they want you to. Are you holding up? You promised me I would never be sitting here again. Amy, I'm sorry. You promised. I... It's gonna be okay. Is it? You're all over the news. People are looking at us funny in the neighborhood. John and Sarah won't even call me back. I wanna get off. I have to get off. It was self-defense. Was it self-defense? You promise. Talk to your daughter. We miss you, Daddy. She too, sweetie. When are you coming home? Soon, baby. Soon. Was he a bad man? The person you hurt? I don't know, baby. Come on, baby. It's time to go. I'll do it. Good evening. I'm Naomi Morgan, and I'm here tonight with Glenn Johnson, who many of you may already know. In the wake of the shooting at Travis Mitchell, there has been much speculation and controversy. But Mr. Johnson's perspective, as aired on last week's broadcast, struck a chord with many citizens. He was Travis's teacher, and his heated words caused quite a stir. The video originally aired right here on your local news, found its way onto the internet, and went viral seemingly overnight. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Johnson. People are saying that you're giving a voice to the struggling black community of Washington, D.C., focusing the collective frustrations, if you will, on this senseless killing. I wouldn't say I'm the voice of this community. I just really think that 
it's crucial that people understand, especially those who are not a part of the affected community, that they understand the perspective of our community. It's common that if a, a black person kills a white person, that justice would be swift, and that that black person is gonna go straight to jail. They're gonna pay with their life. But if a white person kills a black person, their future is debatable. Half the time, they are sent free. Now, how my community is feeling right now is pretty simple. We're feeling loss, we're feeling frustration, and we're feeling uncertainty. So you're saying that you're hoping for a swift justice no, for the shooter? No, th that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I, like many other people in my community, are feeling outraged and confused about what happened to Travis. We have a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of rage, and we don't know where to focus it. But the problem is this, and that's the danger. The problem is that we don't know all the facts. And it's dangerous for us to, to move with outrage and, and, and to direct our rage without knowing exactly what actually happened. And everything that I know, everything that has been reported to me to date has been based off speculation. Nobody knows what actually happened. Do does anybody know what actually happened that morning? As of yet, no witness has come forward to the crime itself, but we have uncovered some evidence which we feel could shed some light onto this confusing, uncertain situation. It appears that Max Ewart, who has refused comment on the situation, has been found to have known direct association with a white power DC group. He has been confirmed as a known member of a DC Aryan Nation gang, which led to his arrest 10 years ago for the assault against an African American youth. Were you aware of that, Mr. Johnson? No. And does that change the situation for you? I should say it does. If that man walks free after killing that poor boy, I will have lost my faith in the criminal justice system. I don't think so. We haven't heard him scream. Man, he's on a roll today. He's having a baby. He might have a record deal. He's having a great hair day. I'm done. You'll never get... Big, Big bird. bird. You guys are good at this. I guess you can tell by my face how I'm beaming. <laughs> Remember, the number one thing you've got to do is what? Smile. Smile! Now, we've got interviews lined up for a few of you. If that's you and you need to talk through anything before you go, I'll be here. But I know you're going to rock these interviews. This is your time, your opportunity, so seize it. And if things aren't going your way, remember, there's no shame in failure. Only shame in not getting back up. You guys are dismissed. You're distracted. What? It's Terrence, isn't it? Yeah. Second day he's missed. I know. Don't give up on him. Go after him. I know he wants this. I just need to push him harder. Then do it. I can cover for you here. Are you sure? Of course, go already. You're the best. I know. <laughs> and modest, too. The most modest. <laughs> I can't come pick them up right now. You said you'd take them. No. I told you I can't just leave. Please just stay another. They helped me get an interview today. Please, just another hour, please. Damn it. Everything okay, Rachel? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Well, not really. 
I know it's stressful. But you're doing really well. You're dedicated. And it shows. It just seems like every time I try to take control of things, the world just makes a point to remind me of how little control I actually have. You just need to keep in mind that we're always going to face obstacles, okay? And I want you to remember that it's your attitude that matters. I deal with adversity. Now, I know you can make this work. I just want you to do what's necessary. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard. You're right, Mr. Johnson. Thanks. You bet, Rachel. With a niece gone, she could be ET home, BET for a week. We could cream bomb, we could get the guap chop, ease on with a pop chop, double chop in the knee song. Look at here, look at here, see some, but the damage, she needs some. Just ask, she takes style, little traffic, stairs in the ledge. You gotta use your head when I said rap, fix it, and to my dog named Spazic. He's a ghost now, came back as a manic, frantic, ghost, not a lever, schizophrenic. I don't give a care, I'm a bandit, be friended. Looking at him like he's running around, like I'm the man, like a dog in the ground. I don't give a care, go pound for pound, he gotta go away, but the blow away. Uh Did you come to bust me for playing hooky? Can I come in? So what? I didn't say anything. Man, why are you here? Show me the error of my ways. I ain't no suit and tie wearing motherfucker like you. I came because I want to ask you to come back. You can't just give up, Terrence. I thought that you said that you were too good for the Aspire program. Do you even have a job? Man, I got my ass fired the other day. What happened? Customer came in late. Lisa was out back. I was just trying to be a team player like you said. I go out front to help the customer. Motherfucker come back and see me talking to the white woman. It's like told me stay at my station. Like I wasn't fit to be up front or something. What the fuck is that? You lost your temper. You couldn't just... Let that disrespect go. Man, I needed that job. Shit was fucked up, though. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to the game. At least I had money. Not living in this shitty basement apartment on fast food wages. You only have two absences. You can still come back. Maybe some people just ain't meant to get out the hood. Like Travis, it just pulls you back in. What do you mean? I saw the whole thing go down, man. You? Yeah, dog. I just thought it was a funny fight at first. I was filming it with my camera phone. You have footage of the murder. Did you give it to the police? I'm not taking any chances with that shit, dog. I'm not going back. Besides, shit you said on TV, felt good to hear. I didn't want to help this cracker get off after killing Travis. I wanted to get the motherfucker myself. I knew Travis. We used to roll together. We used to hustle. Me and Travis, Dante and a few others. But Travis... He got out, man. Started your program. Got himself a real fucking job. 
<laughs> I couldn't believe that shit, man. That's why I started your Aspire program in the first place. Trying to be like him. Then I show up, find out the motherfucker did. Nigga get out the hood, still managed to get himself killed. But you have proof that this man attacked Travis. Travis, he started it, man. Take a look for yourself. I should have had his back, but I just stood there like a fucking dope. You didn't upload this anywhere, did you? Nah, man. I was thinking about deleting it. It just makes me so fucking mad. I can barely take it. You need to channel that frustration into something constructive. You gotta, you gotta understand that the best way to honor Travis is to finish what you started. I, I don't give a fuck about that shit anymore, man. Then what are you gonna do? All I wanna do is get the motherfucker who shot Travis. You all be quiet in the back. Mrs. Nancy couldn't watch you guys tonight, so you're just gonna have to hang out here. Where are you going, Mom? I'm gonna get a job. Wish me luck, okay? Okay. Be quiet back here, and I'll be back in no time. I love you. Rachel Robinson, we'll see you now. Yes! I can't believe it. Thank God. Are you their mother? Yes, yes! What? You're under arrest no, for child endangerment. What? No, no! It was only for a few minutes. I didn't have no spittle. What was I supposed to do? Brandon! Jane! Who are you? I ask the questions here. You're not a cop. What are you doing here? I want to know why you killed Travis Mitchell. Oh, you think I'm going to admit to murder in here? I shouldn't even be talking to you. You will answer me, though. No. I recognize you. And you're that guy on TV who's been inciting everybody I'm not over inciting this. Anybody. Your honesty got a brick thrown through my front window. Scared my wife and kid. I want to know why you are so angry with people that look like me. I'm not. I, I, I used to be, but it's a long time ago. I was scared and angry, and I was looking for someone to blame. So then why? Did you shoot an unarmed black man in the middle of the street in broad daylight? I don't know. It all happened in a flash. I haven't always had the best experiences with people like you. I have a wife and daughter that I have to get home to now and 
can't afford to live with that hate in my heart. Then why keep the tattoos? Costs too much to get rid of. You know, it would be... It would be so easy for everyone if you went to jail for this. I know. You think I wanted to do it? He was attacking me. But your actions have consequences too. You can't go around amping people up, making them think that the system doesn't work am, for them. I am not amping people up. I'm just being honest. Yeah, well, words have consequences. Believe me, I know. You're not the person that I expected to meet. If I admit that Travis Mitchell started that fight with you, then I would be discounting all the good that kid did and all the good he could have done. I would be discounting all the good that I could still do. How do you know what happened? Back off before I call the cops. Right. Yeah, for what crime? Wait for a fucking bus? Fuck you. You have to turn that into evidence. You need to help me. Why? When doing so only helps you and hurts me. I didn't decide to pull that trigger. You did. This isn't right. You can't do this. You need to help me. Hey, you need to help me. Turn that in. Hey, hey, I need help. You can't let him go. Get back here. Hey, get back here. Back off before I call the cops. Right. Yeah, for what crime? Waiting for a fucking bus? Fuck you. Back off before I call the cops. Right. Yeah, for what crime? Waiting for a fucking bus? Fuck you. Alright, pal. Back off before I call the cops. After right. yeah, what crime? Wait for a fucking bus? Fuck you. Gina. What's the matter? What's the matter? Glenn, are you serious? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I totally forgot. No one stands me up. So get your jacket. You're taking me out whether you like it or not. Okay. Uh, Chinese place down the street. I'm, I'll buy it. You bet your ass you're buying. I'm starving. So are you going to tell me what's been going on with you? What do you mean? Come on. You've been completely distracted lately. I mean, you completely forgot about dinner tonight. Yeah, uh, I know. Things have been very strange. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna get? Strange? Gina, you can't tell anybody what I'm about to tell you. Not until I decide what I'm gonna do. What is it? Terrence was a witness to the murder. He saw the whole thing. Terrence? Has he told the police? The only one he told was me. What'd he say? That he's not going to tell the police. I can't blame him, Gina. It's no secret that Terrence hasn't had exactly the best experiences with police. That's it? You're not a detective, Glenn. If Terrence told you something about witnessing that shooting, then you have a responsibility to tell the police what 
did he tell you? He didn't just witness it, Jim. He recorded it. And I forwarded it to my phone. You have the video? Glenn, you have to tell the police. I can't give it to the police, Jean. Travis started it. If that gets out, the shooter, he could walk. Think about Travis's mother. Think about our program. If this video gets out, Gina, then we could lose half of our entire network. We could just kiss it goodbye. Show it to me. I'm not going to show it to you. Not until I figure out what I'm going to do with it. <sighs> Gina, what do you think? Huh? Do you think that this, this guy, this murderer, this shooter, do you think he deserves to get off? Do you think he deserves to get let go? Huh? People are going to begin to associate the Aspire program with employing criminals. Do you want that? So what? You make sure this guy goes to jail and then you become some kind of black justice hero? That's not it. People deserve at least a little bit of justice. And I intend to give it to them. If you're going to be the voice of a community, you have to be careful what you say. And how you say it. Oh, don't give me that bullshit, Gina. What do you think this is, huh? If you think this is how the real world works, you need to open your fucking eyes. Nobody else plays by the rules. So why should I? This is Ewood. My name is Glenn. I know who you are. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about your husband. He is not who you think he is. That's why I'd like to talk to you. He's not a racist anymore. I find that hard to believe, especially after learning about his past. People change. Never had anything from your past remind you of the person you've become? Yes. Then you understand. Those same experiences can also haunt you forever. I'm not saying my husband's perfect, but he is no racist. And he is definitely not a killer. You see, you have to understand, Mrs. Eward, this community has lost a lot of young people to violence in the criminal justice system. Now, I don't expect your husband or people like him to understand that. You mean white people. Let me tell you about your community. I have a six-year-old daughter. The other night while we were watching TV, members of your community threw a brick through my window. With Max in jail, I have to protect us myself. Me. I'm scared, and I can't even turn to my neighbors for help. My husband is facing first-degree murder charges. My daughter's going to grow up without her father. And after all of that, your community still has no sympathy. I don't know what you want from me, but I have nothing left to give. Mommy. What's going on? Mila, honey. Who's that, Mommy? Um, this is Glenn. He's here to talk about your father. Is he going to have a plan? I'll do what I can. Well, I've got to go now, so... Uh, thank you very much for the information.
Hey, look at me. Hey, look at me, cracker. Back off. I ain't out here flashing no gang signs. I ain't got a no baggy ass pen. I'm just trying to get to my fucking job. You don't even know how hard I had to work just to get that. Back off, all right, pal? Back off before I call the cops. All right. And for what crime? Waiting for a fucking bus? Fuck you. Jesse Davis. Hi. Come with me. All right then, Jesse. Uh, go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself and your work experience. Uh, well, I don't have any experience in this field, but I have two years data entry experience, and I used to babysit a lot, which was a ton of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I've been going to the Aspire program for a while now, and I really think I've learned a lot. But no real experience with what we do here. Well, no. Okay, well, um, is there anything else you want to add uh, or tell us to supplement your resume? No. Actually, yes. I know I don't have the job experience or a diploma from some fancy private school, and I know this dress isn't anything special, but it's mine, and what I have is special. So you can just write me off like everyone else, insult me or look down on me, but mister, I don't give a shit. That is your fault and not mine. If you don't want to give me a chance, then whatever, because I'm going to keep getting up and keep trying until I find someone who will. You do not get to control my future. All right then. So when can you start? Today. Hey. Hey, yourself. I saw on the news Max got released on bail. Something about new evidence coming to light? Maybe he just got a lucky break. I'm proud of you. You did the right thing. So I guess that means I'm out of the doghouse. You got some groveling to do. Hello? Tamika. Hold on. Calm down. Hold on. Tamika. I'll be, all right, I'll be right over. I'll be right over. Just... That was my sister. Your sister? She never calls you. Exactly. 
Tammy! Tammy, Dante! Tamika, Dante! Tamika! Dante! What is it? Have you seen Dante? No, I, I just got here. Glenn, you gotta find him. He went over to some guy's house. I think he's gonna do something to that white boy. Did you try his cell phone? It's off! Glenn, please, you gotta find right, him! Okay, okay. Listen, you stay here, all right? Find him. Come on out here, motherfucker. Get your nigga hating, crack the ass out here right now, but we have to break that motherfucking door down. So we will come in there and do your ass in front of your motherfucking wife. I don't give a fuck. I've called the cops. It's gonna be a long ass time for they get here. Want. I want Travis Mitchell back. So what you gonna do? It was self-defense. Man, fuck out my face with that bullshit. Just like any old hating ass white man. You can just kill any old nigga you want. Call that shit self-defense. I'm sorry. Ah, right, don't apologize to me, motherfucker. Apologize to Travis. Your ass gonna see him again. Yeah, well, if you're gonna kill me, go ahead and fucking do it. Right now, baby. Come on. Stop! Stop! What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing here? What, what brought you to this? Not just because I said some things on TV? You lied to me. You made it seem like we was fighting a war, but you betrayed us. You let this man get away with this. All right. Fine. Okay, you think just because you had a hard life that you are entitled to some street justice? Man, this ain't got shit to do with that. This man is proof that our lives don't mean worth a damn. He was popping all that good shit about justice a few days ago, brother. TV? Is that all just bullshit? That racist fuck club Travis in cold blood. You said it yourself. It's fucking war. Now it's our turn to strike back. Yes, it is a war in your mind, not on the street. I'm asking you, you are better than this. You think that you are the only nigga on planet Earth that has been knocked down? Huh? And you think that you are the only nigga that has been pushed to the ground? Is that what this is? Look at you. Eat you. You're gonna get used. You're gonna get betrayed. You're gonna get spit on. You're gonna get knocked down. And what I'm asking you, what I am pleading with you, is that if you just please harness the will to get back up. Man, fuck up. Fuck you. That's all I ever get from you is this long-winded, preachy-ass bullshit. You don't know what the fuck it's like, man. Fuck off. I'm asking you, please, do not repeat the cycle. He already told you to get lost, Glenn. Dante. What the fuck are you doing protecting this little white boy anyway? Huh? Can there ever be one fucking time where you just stand beside your own goddamn brother? Every fucking time you always gotta think that you better than me or some shit. Like I'm the fuck up. But I'm the only fucking one at home. I'm the only fucking one at home, Glenn, taking care of our family. Now you wanna come out of nowhere and choose this white crack over me? Get the fuck on my face! In the wake of last week's shooting, things have yet to settle down in Southeast DC. After the introduction of some very revealing new evidence, shooting suspect Max Ewart was released on bail yesterday. 
only to be met with violence at his own home late last night. Officials fear this is yet another instance of gang-related violence. Now on to breaking news. More explosions have been reported in Israel. It's okay. It's alright. Where are my babies? I had to call in a few favors when I found someone to watch them. Who? Oh. Jesse. <laughs> You'd be surprised how good she is with kids. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. It was awful. Really messed up. So mess up. We can't win them all. But we can get back up. 